guest with me. Welcome to the show, Marsha Greenwich. So Marsha is what we'd call in the industry a triple threat. Actor, singer, dancer, everything. Don't make that face. Do you have a favorite in the arts? No. You love them all Performing equally? Performing arts was always my love. So is a, as you said, it's all encompassing. So yes. once you could do a performance that encompasses all three, I have yeah. it. So musical theater then? Yeah. Singing, dancing, acting. <laughs> but we unfortunately don't have it here, but yeah. Yes. That would be ideal. Yes. A bit, according to my friend, probably one day we will have a Bajan wood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Instead of Hollywood, a Bajan wood. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> With all that's been happening, we've been navigating the COVID-19 environment for about a year now. Mm -hmm. How are you getting your fix? I know performing artists need to perform. How has it been for you? To be honest with you, Paula, performing arts is something that starts within. Yeah. So for me to be out there hoping to find something mm -hmm. is like a, a, an, an addict trying to get a fix when you have that fix within you all along. Yeah. So for me, I just tap into, I have music. Mm -hmm. I have my other friends. We do we would meet up online and we have our meetings when the next step for the foundation, Israel Foundation. Yes. And as you would know, we had a little project there, so we yes. go for more. So yes. it's a situation where it starts within, so it's like, okay, I am a creative. Mm -hmm. So a creative don't necessarily gotta look outside and say, Oh Lord, you're here boring. You will probably <laughs> see me at home and you call me and it's like, Why well, can't hear you call here partying? Are you partying it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you watching? Yes, I hear just connecting with my creative element. It's, yes. it's something that we got to live every day. So whether they got COVID or they don't got COVID, we got to make this thing a part of us. Yes. And then it, 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 it comes out in yes. everything that we do. So the expression is what you see on stage, but the creative element is what we live on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't miss it. I always oh, have it every day. You have it every day. Every single when did you day. discover it in yourself? <sighs> From a little girl, I would say, I went, I didn't want to be cliche or anything, that's the truth. But I started at Heinsbury School as a little thing. And I remember my aunt was a teacher there. And she would have the girls dancing because Heinsbury was known for the performing arts. Mm -hmm. Every Nifka, you see them dancing and singing. Yeah. I was... Because I guess because I was her niece, I got the opportunity to be in uniform at two. So <laughs> as far back then, two to four, that age range, I remember being the little girl in between them. But as it grew, as I grew and I got into primary school, mm -hmm. that expression was there. But I went to Charles F. Room and we didn't have... After leaving Hinesbury, we didn't have that exposure. Mm. But thankfully, we had Israel Lovell in my community. Mm -hmm. And at 10 years old, they started. And we had the opportunity to dance mm -hmm. and sing. And that was like a happy, or safe, a positive place where we as young children got to push our energies. 
So yeah. that became, I would say that is where I really harnessed the, the, the other bits of my talent. I knew I had a little talent, but when I joined Israel Lovell, yeah. this is now 20... I shame. 31 years ago. What? So you started at one? Yeah, I'm, I'm 41. I started Israel Lovell at, at 10 and it just blew from there. Yeah. The rest is history. What is your experience like in Israel Level Foundation, I'll tell you from the outside looking in, I've always low key wished that I was in Pineland's Creative Workshop or Israel Level Foundation. It looks like the most beautiful place to be as a creative. What has your experience been like? I could be biased, but I can honestly tell you, I sit here as a proud person, a graduate from the university, a self employed person someone that interacts with the grassroots and could still align myself with the highest level. Mm -hmm. And all of this, not only from what I would have learned and gravitated from and pulled from my parent, my mother and my bigger sister. Yeah. I have to, my bigger of the two. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole ethos of my being mm -hmm. started from that person at Israel level where we were allowed to express ourselves, but be respectful, like here I am now. And I told my sister I have an interview, and the first thing she would say, she's the director. You know, you just never know who watching. Yeah. And we grew up knowing that we come up from poor and humble beginnings, yeah. but when we go out, we as a family, mm -hmm. don't ever let nobody disrespect none of the two or any of all, any of us, because yeah. we are a unit. And yeah. we have lived that way. We have been lucky to travel over the years. We had the opportunities that some persons would only dream of, and we are thankful for that. Mm -hmm. We had exposed, we were exposed internationally, regionally, mm -hmm. and it, it rounded us into the individuals that we have become. Mm -hmm. Some of us chose academic paths, but it never disconnected from our roots of the being kind to others, loving one another, because we all came from different beginnings, but humble beginnings, yeah. and encompassing that as a family unit. So as I said earlier, it's a positivity that we find. And mm -hmm. we know as the older generation, the, old, the elders in the group, we have managed to pass on this to our, our young ones, like my yeah. daughter. And it, it's a family thing as well. So is we your have, daughter in the foundation as well? Yes. <laughs> my daughter is a dancer. Yeah. And she also is expressed to, has expressed to me that she wants to going to theater as well. Mm. And then we have brothers and sisters. And now we have Corey. Everyone knows Corey. He's the musical director. Mm -hmm. And he was birthed also in his talents. He found, he started as a, as a stilt walker. Mm -hmm. And now he's a musical director. Oh. I, might not be, I might not be the person seen on stage all the time, but I'm always there. Yeah. Mother Sally. Yes. <laughs> and so I don't have to be there, but I'm saying that because of the, the values and the morals that we have been shown and taught. Mm -hmm. And it goes not only from performing arts, but it goes deeper historically. Mm -hmm. Knowing your heritage, when you go out there to do a piece, you got to understand this piece. If you go in and use a cane cutter, you can't be smiling. Mm -hmm. These people ain't had time to smile. Mm -hmm. If you go in there and you, put, and you put, um, portraying a slave, they're not time for the makeup. I mean, mm. it, it grows you. So yeah. then you become fully aware of self. And then you don't have, okay, I don't have any makeup. That doesn't mean I'm not beautiful. Yeah, no, it just yeah. means maybe I didn't have to, but this is me. Yeah. So it, it has really, really shown us. Yeah. And everyone would probably voice this, that we are a family. It don't only look so, we don't only portray, but Israel love it's is deep-rooted family. Always family. I think I saw you in the historic removal of Nelson's statue yeah. performing as well. That was a monumental occasion in it just gave me goosebumps, baby. And I want to ask you how you felt experiencing that moment in history in Barbados. I can explain this. I can't even explain it in words. It's wow. all about emotion. You ask me so and I just get shh, 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 shh. Yeah. Now we had anyone that knows us, one of our signature pieces is Maafa. And this deals with the, the, the transatlantic slaves from Africa being brought here and, you know, having to work under horrible conditions. And the, the, the whole element of the piece, really, is the freedom that you have at the end. Mm. What we did, and that's why I explained to you the history and the knowledge of what you're doing comes in. Mm -hmm. We were practicing, and we couldn't just pick up anybody and say, we got to do this. 
it got to be somebody that grounded and understand what is Nelson, who is Nelson, what are we trying to portray, why are we doing this, mm -hmm. why not um, pick anybody and just tell them to, to act as a slave. Mm -hmm. No, because you need to, if, if you teaching is a, is a story, it's always a history lesson. You are that, you are the conduit and you are the person's expressing people would feel what you portray and mm -hmm. that's the story and once people feel it then you have you have achieved what you wanted to do yeah so we we would have gone into you know okay what we can do we can do this part because this part and then we went through it we knew the piece that we wanted we we talked about it and at the last minute we said but wait when we got the, the day we had the rehearsal and it was almost unanimous the, the fundamental part we're missing, the master. And it's like, oh my God. It's not like, when you put yourself in, a, in, the, in the position, you realize these things. The day of the performance, anybody that knows me, that knows Ami Arts, I don't hide it because when I go into a role, you have to personify that. Mm -hmm. So that day, it was a very hard and a very heavy day. Mm -hmm. And everybody there was just tense. And, and we know how it is. And you, 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 connect it almost you say you connect with the ancestors and it's not to frighten people but the only way I could portray this is from them giving me the energy to do so yeah it was heavy them tears was real tears I am telling you I felt all like now I'm talking to you and I feel it because mm -hmm. I understand what my ancestors went through because of the history that we were taught and mm -hmm. the things that you research and it was a pleasure seeing Nelson come down but more so for for, for the persons who are conscious are persons that hope to ever be conscious in mm -hmm. what Barbados, historic Barbadiana and, the, and the, the history, the hidden history that people are fearful to learn mm -hmm. would have gotten in that 15 minutes some glimpse of what our ancestors had to go through. Mm -hmm. But it was heavy. So after, he's always got tears and it's like a release. It's mm -hmm. a whole thing. The same way how you hype up, you got to bring yourself right back yeah. down. And then once you bring yourself right back down, you say, okay, and then you move on. We've seen a lot of method actors get lost in a role almost. Uh -huh. Have you ever experienced that? Not and how do you navigate it? Not so, getting lost. Yeah. But my my biggest role on uh today in terms of theater now mm -hmm. would have been in Girl on Fire. That was um directed by Simon Allen and it was scripted by Mariama Mariama, I can't remember, sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't remember her last name. But that was the part where I became, I can't say the word, but the, the word mm -hmm. for prostitute. Yeah. And I said it, I was in the raw sense. Mm -hmm. That was the woman that I became. Mm -hmm. And every time I went on stage, I felt the, the independence. I felt the energy. I felt the drive. Then nobody, I mean, I felt it. I lived it. Mm -hmm. So much so that after the play, a gentleman was asking, like, one of the reporters... Um, so you played this role, and he was trying to suggest maybe you would have had to experience, to experience. Mm -hmm. and that is that is it. So every night I go home, and as a as a as a person in the theater, as you know, you have to have a balance, and you have to yes, it's, it's very intoxicating, and you feel the energy. But at the end of the day, that's not you. Mm -hmm. When those cameras flick off, flick off you now have to come down and ground or reground yourself with who you are. Yeah. And it takes knowing who you are first. Yeah. So we got to know who we are first yeah. to get to another place, to get back then grounded to that person. Other people. <laughs> so I think it's the lack of grounding. And you will also hear a lot of these big actors say, at some point in time after, many, many years, you say, oh, but you know, I didn't know who I was. And mm. I felt comfort in being this body. And I yeah. felt comfort in being that body. So it's about being grounded. Yes. And talking about who Marsha is, she's also a mother, as she would have mentioned yeah. already. And you say your daughter is also coming up in the arts. Do you feel that you need to mother hen and protect her because of how the arts is often treated in Barbados? Or are you just pushing her to go ahead, full flight? How has it been for you? I am just pushing her to be the best yeah. person she wants to be. That's it. Yeah. If she chooses that she wants to go into the arts, like as as we know, we are all we have different hats. Mm -hmm. So the arts in Barbados is not ideal as a profession. Mm -hmm. I if if the arts was ideal as a profession, I would not have been 
in any of the other things that I, I have ever done. Mm -hmm. Maybe I might not be, uh, I might be self-employed, but are arts related. Yeah. But sadly, Barbados does not have the outlet for that. Mm -hmm. So I would tell her there's nothing wrong with the arts. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with freedom. You need the balance, you need the expressive nature. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, do what makes you happy. And yeah. then, I, I root him for you. Just once in prison, in, in murder, your friend, I got, you got just be back. the best. Just be the best along the way. I want to push her with a heavy hand and say, I need you to be X or Y. Yes. Do the best. Whatever makes you happy, I can support you, but be the best at whatever you do. You decide to do. Yeah. And on that note, we are going to break for a quick word from our friends at the National Cultural Foundation. And then we'll be right back with episode six of the NCF Presents for the Culture. Oral traditions has been lost, but one of the main things that has remained is the use of plants and herbs among Afro-Caribbean people. Herbal medicine is the mother of all medicines. All generations of knowledge that was using these different modalities, these natural ways of living. A cup of heritage tea is like sipping on tradition. You're watching for the culture. culture. So Marcia, I want to ask you now about your artistic expression and how motherhood changed the woman you are on stage. How did you find yourself as a performer having experienced the miracle of childbirth and raising a young woman? It never ever changed, to be yeah. honest with you, no. Yeah. Marsha, the performer, uh, and anybody that would have seen that footage in 2009, mm -hmm. I th yeah, she was born in 2009, 2008, up to the December when they had the NCF mm -hmm. um, awards. Yeah. I was Mother Sally, and anybody was like, wait, you had a baby already? <laughs> I was there and Ayoka was in my belly and I was performing because again it's a part of me. I ain't yeah. never, I ain't ever want to disconnect from my performing to do nothing. Yeah. I went to university and I perform. Yeah. I work in industrial relations and I perform. Yeah. I went to school to do um, beauty therapy and I was dreaming of performing yeah. and I what I did when I couldn't perform was just embrace what I was seeing in New York City and hoping that I could express it on stage someday. Yeah. So being a mother don't stop nothing. <laughs> it only stopped me now from, I don't even know, like, it made me no less expressive than I was before. Yeah. And because I live who I am and I try to express to her, be yourself, yeah. I'd always be Marsha. Yeah. That's the best thing. That's the easiest way to be yeah. myself. And Authentically Marsha. Marsha. Authentically, a hundred and, and fifty thousand percent, <laughs> and she's just be like, Mommy. And I was like, Yes, I <laughs> I can hear you again telling me, Mommy, when I ever stop dancing. And I look forward, hopefully, one of these days, yeah, we do some piece, yeah, that she and I get to be on stage to share the stage yeah. together. That would be nice. That would be a dream come true for you. The, I can the biggest part of being a mother as a performer yeah. is. Teaching her, I remember I had to do a clip. I had to on Facebook. One morning I was doing Malasali and I dressed in my Malasali to go to take her to school. And I was like, and she, I realized this quizzical look. And I was like, my girl, what happened? <laughs> Why you buy your costume? <laughs> and I had, I said, no, you you late, but I ain't think. And I had to do a video expressing her, my girl, this is us. This is yeah. me. Don't ever be ashamed. This is what, this thing is what grown your money, you know. I yeah. let you know, I portray a character, but this thing used to pay me. That's how you, like, become a little comfortable. Yeah. So don't ever try to disconnect from the heritage, and that's a problem that we got. That's we got to get back into harnessing and expressing the children. The Americanized thing is okay, but we got something that we got connect to. Of course. We have to be connected and grounded, and I tell she, and I know she would never do it again. Yeah. Because I post it all over the place, and I say, <laughs> no, there's a, there's a, as a performing artist, having mm -hmm. a daughter, they have their inhibitions, they have their, their drawbacks of what they see, because I know as a parent, I have to teach her. Yeah. I have to show she, listen, there's a character, and there's a part of me, Melissa is a part of me. Mm -hmm. When you see me doing this, it's, it's, it's about us, and feeling as Barbadian, as Bajan, as expressive as I can be. Yeah. It's not anything demeaning my character, anything of that sort. So don't ever let me hear you tell me that you feel embarrassed 
for seeing me in my costume and free, freedom of expression. You yeah. need to have freedom of expression. It Absolutely. might not be in a costume. But don't ever let nobody cut you short and tell you you can't express yourself. Yeah. We don't have to be disrespectful. It's all about expressiveness and assertiveness. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, you're giving me chills. Oh. That was a real teaching moment yeah, for girl. you. Yeah, girl. Because there's a real issue with how the arts is perceived. Yeah. A hobby, something to do on the side, you know, a phase. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to take these moments wherever you can and teach younger Barbadians yeah. that they can be a fully formed creative. And it helps. And it it helps you to be the person that you are. And I always go back, not that I'm comparing, but yeah. yes, I am comparing. Yeah. And I have no problem. I could watch Jamaicans and Trinidadians be interviewed any day. Yeah. And I talk about the highest. Because you find these persons never disconnect. Yeah. And you could, they could be the, the most prestigious, and mm -hmm. they would come down and party and scare and dance and bogle, mm -hmm. all these things with you. But then we consider ourselves, and we have, we have categorized ourselves as conservative. Mm -hmm. And then you would see person, we had an, ex, an, ex, an experience a few years ago, and I never will forget this. It was the opening of Parliament. Mm -hmm. They wanted the characters. They wanted all the fanfare, but they did not want the characters to dance. They didn't want Mother Sally to be Mother Sally. They just wanted Mother Sally a costume. They just wanted us to be there to show the world that we're there. But this disconnect and it's almost like a hypocritical nature that we sometimes have. And it and it bothers me. Yeah. Because then we go and embrace other people's culture. Yeah. But then we look down or wow. we limit what we have and mm -hmm. try to nullify or, or water it down. Just we won't see it. But when it comes to expressing it, no, 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 no. So we got we, we polish it. <laughs> we gotta live it. We gotta breathe it. If we as the the the, the practitioners are the only persons that are doing it, it can die because the people can just say, Oh, that's them people mm, are be saying oh that girls do Malasali. Mm -hmm. No, you should there's no reason why you can't got a little but in Malasali. Trinidadians has got more jumbies from us yeah. from Nanka Walk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What mommy auntie will I have my side? Come, I can show you. Yeah. And it goes but on. Let me go. Let me go. <laughs> let me make it. We gotta normalize it to be yes. a, a part of us. Of course. And if do. we if we only do it for a certain grouping, the the more the bigger persons out there, the majority will never say it will see it as those people that is entertained. Yeah. In a entertaining, this this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And we need to embrace it. And by embracing it, you gotta teach it. You got yeah. you not only teach it. Physically, but historically, theoretically, we yeah. got to teach it so people yeah. can understand where we come from. I always think of Asian cultures where there are performing art schools from the age of three. Mm -hmm. So you would be on this track. And yes, you would do some math and English too. And we want to count all the money we're going to make. Sure. And we want to write letters of proposals to governments to fund our projects. Mm -hmm. But these kids are from three years old learning all the historic performing arts yep. in their territory. And it's a thing of beauty. It's a cultural thing. And I hope thing. that we could, it's a culture we could get thing. there one day. We got, we got to live. As I said, and it, and it comes down to the persons that are in control. Yes. If the person in control don't regulate it and instruct that this is what we want, yes. then it's not going to happen. Because yes. one group trying to do it for a, a portion, a, a minority, it's not going to do it. Then you only have that minority yes. that can do this. But if you bring it and you fuse it into the schools, fuse it into your being, mm -hmm. fuse it into everything. Into our home. In your home. It starts at home. Yeah. Starts at home. Yeah. So me teaching my daughter not to be a, not to be ashamed of what your mother is, that's one child. Yeah. But you going out there and you having the opportunity to express to these children not only how to be rhythmically, mm -hmm. but historically and the reason why I should be just as grounded in this mm -hmm. as me knowing how one and one is two yeah. are and and that and there there and there and all that it blends you as when, when you, you grow up it should be when you grow up now it, it it connects to who you are i of could course. be i could dance and that's the only thing it comes on to dancing i love the new way that the creative way to some young people dancing yeah because the fusing different elements we don't even know it the fusing yeah. things like people would see the girls shaking the bottom and yeah. oh my god no Read the history. Yeah. Read I spoke your to history. John about that, Dr. Hunt, and I discussed ancestral memory and how there are things our bodies are doing from it. that we don't even know that if you look at a description 
all looking back at the mm -hmm. time of slave history, how they were dancing. If you look at a description then and a description now, written by someone who never met the exactly. person they know, it's the same when you look at it. It's just like when yeah. you watch you when you watch the videos all over the world, you say, Well, well them in Beijing, but we we <laughs> like my grandmother tell me so. Yeah. And then but yeah, it's and, and again it comes down. If we teach it, yeah, then you know what's right from you know the limit. So then you won't go and look at the children. You would know when it's loon and going yeah. to that border. But when children are expressing themselves because they like the music, they, they just embrace it. No, you stop that. <laughs> and when the child now, I'm feeling awkward and trying to fill into square pegs and round holes, you wonder what happened. Yeah. But you use the body that stopped this child from expressing who they want to be yeah. from three, four, seven, ten. Oh shoot, you got coming in because you gotta stop that. Yeah. When you stop that child then from being in the arts or whatever, then you wonder you won't be beating them with a whip no because you gotta start up music. Yeah. You gotta start back to dance. Mommy, uh, I had a whole year without it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean do that page. a lot. It's time to focus on school, so you gotta stop sports, you gotta stop your performing arts, everything. Mm -hmm. We we do that all the time. But I also want to get into the fact that you are also a full-time entrepreneur with a career in aesthetics as yes. well. How do you balance being a busy performer? There are always rehearsals and running your business and motherhood and everything else. How do you find balance, Marsha? By not thinking about it. Okay. And I tell people so because as a performing artist growing up, I'm being, luckily, thank you for Israel level again, always active. So it wasn't only Israel level, crop over instant for instance. We would have crop over dance performances. You go, you rehearse. Then I, I am a backup for twenty I don't even really believe that is that long. For about twenty plus years now I was at House of Soka. Oh. And yeah, it's crazy. But then you go from dancing, you go rehearse, but then you just don't think about it. After it done, then you think about it. Mm -hmm. But in terms of my life now as an aesthetician, the energy and again the focus that I would have put in and the importance of doing well and putting yourself behind whatever you choose to do. Yeah. That started out from young, but me, I I got that motivation from mm -hmm. I guess I guess the performing arts, the expressiveness and everything has come into one. Yeah. So I was in IR before, I was in health and safety. Mm -hmm. And with that being my background as well, I Push, then I realized, wait, well, I like this aesthetics thing. Yeah. I like the sanitation of nails and the importance of how people felt when they got these things done. Yes. I was like, this thing I want to do. And, I, and then I put my hundred, the drive that I had in everything, I just put it behind what I do. And I always believe if you're going to do something, do the best. As yeah. I told you, that's the same thing I yeah, tell you. I lost, well, now I lost my job. I moved from one job. I lost that job. Mm. And then I was like, what? There's my opportunity. Uh, Away I went. I went, I was like, no, no time better than now. I yeah. went, I thought, tried to always be motivated, pull that in motivation from deep, deep, even if it's on there, your gizzard, or we ain't got none of them. <laughs> uh, I pull it, and you just gotta keep pushing and yeah. um, focusing and, and knowing that the bigger picture out there is that you wanna create that name for yourself, you wanna yeah. make people happy, you wanna keep on performing at a higher standard, yeah. and that's all I just put into my business every day, the love for it. Yeah. I, I can talk to you all day, Marsha. <laughs> but before you go, you seem so passionate and self-motivated. I want you to tell someone watching, someone in the arts especially, how can you stay motivated even in this current environment? To anyone watching who might feel less or, you know, you feel down, you got to dig within and use this time as that time to reflect. So we don't have the performances. So maybe I'm a stilt walker. What can I do? Or maybe I should strap on my stilts and go there. Or let me look at a music compilation that I could use that I find resonating with me at this point in time that would push my performance a few notches higher. To that person out there that in theater like us that starved for stage and camera. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just gotta watch videos, watch film, research things, look at how best you could position like you know, how best we could, could motivate self mm -hmm. and so that when that opportunity comes, you never know who's watching and you might be out there and when you dig deep and you connect and get grounded, 
then you could better be able to say when the op many time opens that you are prepared and you're ready. Yeah. Don't let people tell you no and that you are not good enough stop you from motivating and pushing to be that person. Because that, yeah, if that's where you want to be, be the best of that that you want to be. And that's all. That's the only thing I could be. I, 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 I'm telling you what I do. I stop home. I listen to music. I talk to my family. Mm -hmm. I connect with... I don't even watch movies for enough. Because sometimes movies that make me think too much <laughs> and I want me in my too space, tiring. it's too tiring. You understand what I mean? I get that. Even that, I don't do because yeah. I don't think that I should be taking on a burden that's not mine. Yeah. And I've also been in the process of learning who I am and feeling, refeeling and reconnecting with self. Yeah. It's something that you can never get tired of doing. So reconnect with you and let us as a, as a, as a performing artist, when you go out there to perform, let people say, what? What she had? What the... The thing in Messi at all, this girl on point, this fella <laughs> hot. I mean, you know, keep at your trade and keep yeah. going. You can't stop because this is us. Yeah. And we as a unit got to band together and stop the jealousies, they have yeah. a lot of that, stop the prejudices, stop the one sidedness and yeah. just enjoy it and let we come together. Also ask for help. If yeah. you have a situation where you're not sure, you don't know everything, you all you, you never my sister and never know everything. famous Tyrone Tyrone <laughs> Trotman, when ain't arrive yet, when ain't know about arrive <laughs> So you ain't arrive yet because you always you always can learn and relearn things. Yeah. So put yourself out there to relearn, yeah. focus, motive try to be self motivated. If you are not self motivated, find someone out there that can mm -hmm. bring that and push you and you're gonna be good to go, man. We in this together. I love it. Thank you so much, Barsha. Like, just uh -huh. that clip, we need to get that, save that, and put it in performing arts school, send it to the theater arts people at BCC, everybody in fine arts. Thank you so much for your time today, You are so much. It was a pleasure. And it's been so great chatting with her on episode six of the NCF Presents 4D Culture. Stay tuned. We've got so much more for you. Bye-bye.